Hi everybody, Danny Bader here and welcome to another episode of our Back to Life podcast. Our guest today is Damian Jackson and I think you are certainly going to take away some things from our conversation together. Here's the quick backstory on Damian. He was raised in Las Vegas by a single mom with his brother. At 14 years of age, he went over to France to be an exchange student. After high school, he wanted to go to college and realized that he didn't have the finances to do it, so he followed his brother into the Navy. In the Navy, he saw a video about Navy SEALs, and he said, hmm, that looks pretty interesting. I'm going to try that. He goes on to serve as a Navy SEAL for six years, and then getting out of the Navy says, hmm, I think I want to play college football. Never played football at all. Played soccer and baseball. He writes an email letter to the top 25 football teams in the country. He gets on the University of Nebraska team. You'll have to hear the story on that one. He graduates from the University of Nebraska, has one more year to play, plays at the University of Buffalo, and now he has his eyes on the NFL. He's 30 years old. And man, in our conversation, did Damien offer me, offer you, some simple insight and wisdom and perspective and has some great conversation around fear. And it really made me kind of sit up and think, gosh, Danny, you got you got an opportunity here to do some more of these things that Damien is talking about, to shift perspective. So settle back in and listen to my conversation with Damien Jackson. All right, everybody, welcome to our episode of our Back to Life podcast with my guest today, Damian Jackson. Damian, thanks a lot for taking the time to chat with us. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. Listen, why don't we start in, in the intro? I gave just a little bit of your backstory, but I'm sure that the uh, audience here would love to hear, you know, where you grew up, where you went to high school, and then we'll talk about some of the the decisions you made. All right. Yeah. Um, I was born in California. And uh, I moved to uh, Vegas when I was about 11 or 12 and been there for uh, all of high school and everything. So mm-hmm. went to Shadow Ridge High School in Vegas. And then uh, right after high school, I ended up joining the military. Mm-hmm. And uh, you want me talking to that, too? Like, Yeah. So so you went to high school. Did you play sports in high school? Yeah, I actually played baseball and soccer. Played baseball most of my life for like 16 years uh, uh-huh. before the military. And then... Um, soccer i was a foreign exchange student in france so i picked up soccer there so when i got back i uh i was playing soccer oh i got it when were you a foreign exchange student how old were you uh i was 14 i believe sophomore in high school yeah wow that's cool so then you yeah certainly picked up soccer over there i guess yeah and then you came back and you got uh, what do you got brother what's your family when you were growing up yeah i just have a brother a brother most 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 time single mom uh and a brother okay Single mom in Vegas and brother. Um, so that's cool. So you get out of high school and what was your, did you always know you wanted to go into the military or, or college? What were you thinking? Uh, no, I wanted to go to college, but it was too expensive for us. So uh, I got accepted to a couple, but I uh, ended up not going. My brother the year before, actually, uh, he joined the military. So that's kind of where like the idea of the military came from. So they can pay for my schooling and stuff. So uh, I knew I wanted to go still go to school, but I made the decision just to have the military pay for it after I do a couple of years. That's good. That's good. What's your brother's name? Uh, Adam. 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 So, so Adam went and what branch of the military was he in? He was in the Navy as well. He was a fire controlman in the Navy. Okay. In the Navy. So that's it. So then you, you followed him into the Navy. Yeah. Right. That's cool. Well, I love that, right? You had a goal. You wanted to go to college. You know, you didn't have the resources and you didn't take no as an answer. You just said, okay, let me figure out another way which I think is is such a powerful lesson for all of us. So you go into the Navy, and then um, I understand, and thank you, obviously, for your service. I'm sure everybody else thanks you for your service and doing your best to keep us safe over here and keep us free. Um, you went into the Navy then, and you, you got into the Navy SEALs, right? Tell me about how – tell us about how did that develop? Did you always want to be a SEAL or – Yeah, so um... – I took like a different route, I guess you'd say to become a Navy SEAL. So like normally you would, you would decide you'd want to be a SEAL and then you'd go try out, you'd go like to the, to the recruiter's office and you tell them you want to be a SEAL and then you go to a place where you try out, you do your run, swim, all your times and stuff. But mm-hmm. I actually went into the military 
in boot camp, I was supposed to be a hospital corpsman. And uh, so instead of getting your contract before you go into boot camp, uh, I had a different contract as a hospital corpsman. And during boot camp, you uh, after a couple of days, you go and you do your swim test. Mm -hmm. And when you're there, they have put everybody in a room and then they ask, like, uh, they show you a video of like SEAL and SWIC and SWIC is a special boat team unit. Okay. They're like, uh, they kind of like drive, they got all the guns on the boats and everything, but, uh, they show a video of those two. And, uh, at the end of it, they ask, you know, who wants, to, if anybody wants to volunteer, raise your hand. And like everybody, everybody rose their hand cause they wanted to do it. And, uh, that's kind of how I did it. So they like took us across the pool deck and then, uh, we just had to do some pull-ups and then whoever could pass the pull-ups are like, all right, come back here next morning at like four in the morning. And right. We'll do the run, swim, the push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups yeah. and all of that. So uh, it's definitely not the way to do it. I wouldn't recommend anybody trying Like you could obviously try that way, but I wouldn't, wouldn't put all your money in that. Cause I was like one of the only ones that would, uh, that's made it so far. Like me and just maybe one or two other people before that I knew of that's ever done it that way. So Wow, it's definitely not uh, not the route you want to you want to choose if you want. Yeah, to yeah, it's it's little, little, the road less traveled, right? But yeah, but, I, but yeah, of course I'd want to be a Navy SEAL, like I think everybody does. Yeah, before going in the military, stuff like that. It's just uh, I just got super lucky. I I passed my tests, and you know, for the tests for the run swim, the only thing that saved me was I was able to swim pretty well. And mm -hmm. then there's like a normal baseline test that you you could take for like baseline numbers for the the times for the run, swim, and pull-ups and all that. Mm -hmm. And then there's like excellent scores. And I just happened to get excellent on all of them. So that's the yeah. only thing that really saved me. Well, so I don't I know how much this. luck. I'm, I'm sure you put a lot of physical training into growing up, right? Yeah, I just played sports my whole life. Just, yeah. My so mom always say, had me in sports. So I, yeah, luck is where opportunity meets preparation, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what was that Navy SEAL? So then did you go into that? You know, we all, we've all seen it before on you know youtube or in movies hollywood or whatever but what, what was that training like that you had to get into how long was that um there's multiple different like training spots but uh at different time lengths like when you first get into the military and you have your seal contract after boot camp mm -hmm. you go to uh chicago for two months and you uh it's called pre buds and then you train there and that gets you ready for the running and the swimming and mm -hmm. a little bit of lifting but it's basically uh swimming every day because swimming is like a big big important i don't think a lot of people don't know how to swim like efficiently enough and like how much they swim yeah so you swim every day and then you run every other day and then you lift uh sometimes not too much right but uh that that kind of gets you prepped up and then they prep you for like what the actual training is going to be like and then once you do that you fly to uh california and then there you uh it's buds basic underwater demolition school you do that for six months but it's broken up into three phases and they're each two months long. But the first phase is like what everybody sees online about like the, uh, the everybody getting their butt kicked with yeah. all the training with like the boats four o'clock in the morning, getting in the surf and rolling in the sand and all that. Yeah. So that's like, yeah, that's the first, that's the first two months of that. And that's wow. when everybody, everybody quits and all that. Yeah. And then after, once you make it past that, the second hurdle is the dive phase. And that's kind of where you lose some of the people because uh you have some tests that are underwater with like scuba gear and those are pretty hard mentally and and just mm -hmm. like it, it's mostly mental but uh mm -hmm. those tests some people fail that and then third mm -hmm. phase is kind of just getting you ready for like uh the next part which is uh shooting and demolition that's where you learn like the basic skills for shooting and demo mm -hmm. and so that's six months then you graduate that you're not a seal yet uh once you graduate that then you go to something called SQT seal qualification training. Mm -hmm. That's another six, seven months, uh, wow. maybe a little bit longer, depending on certain people, but that's also, that's getting you ready for like an actual seal team to be like a new guy in a seal team, part mm -hmm. of your platoon. Mm -hmm. And that goes through, you kind of do like, uh, you do your land air and sea like different events and stuff. So mm -hmm. you do your, your jumping out of planes, you mm -hmm. do your underwater scuba, like uh, nav underwater. And then, mm -hmm. You do all kinds of stuff. So you're just wow. getting ready to become a SEAL. And then um, and then once that you graduate first part, that, Let me back up to that first part. When you, you said the first couple of months or so when a lot of guys uh, drop out. Um, how many went into your class in that first part? Uh, I don't know the exact number. It was around like 200 and I'd say 50 to 60 uh, joined with my class. And how and many then, How many graduated? Uh, around 20. 
Wow. I don't know the exact, I forget the exact number, That's but crazy. Uh, so 10, 10 ish yeah. percent. Yeah. We won't, we won't split hairs, but if we get close. Yeah. My class was a little bit high on the graduation rate because we had a, like, there's an opportunity to get rolled back in when you're going through training. Like if you get hurt mm-hmm. and stuff. So people like if you, there's different classes in the summer and winter, mm-hmm. the winter ones kind of. Were you ever scared up. in all that training? You know, I've seen the things when you're underwater and they cut your hose or they pull your hose out or. Were you, were you ever scared? No, I was just, well, I was 18, like one of those two stupid to quit guys. I didn't really care. <laughs> like, I don't really remember it too much, but no, not scared. Uh, the only like real challenge I had in there was I was one of the bigger guys going in, you know, I'd say average weight is probably like 180, like right. maybe. Well, what do you, what do you know? You're six, what, six, two, six, three. I'm well, yeah, I wasn't this way. I'm six two two sixty right now. But when I was 60. doing the training, I was two twenty five, which is a little bit bigger. So I had a little bit tougher time on the run. So it was really the only thing that kind of mm-hmm. I was kind of in like the back of the back. But yeah. was, everything else was was fine. It just depends. I don't know. Just if you don't yeah. really think about it, you just do it. Like so I never said, really too. scared. Did you ever think about quitting? No, it's never crossed my mind. Wow. And why do you think that is? Because not know. many people uh, could say that in life, Damien, right? Because yeah. as, as the audience listens, probably maybe a few of them have ever been close to something like SEAL training. And many times it's it's easy for us in life to want to quit. So so what, why do you think it never crossed your mind? It's a beautiful saying. Um, you know, I, I don't have a golden answer for that one. I have no idea because... Uh, all I know is like when you're going through the training and you have that many people, you kind of pick out like in your mind, like, oh, yeah, that guy's going to make it. He's not going to make it. And it just ends up like once you see like the end result, it's never who you think is going to make it like the top, the fastest runner and the strongest guy. Like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, he should be a seal. It's like those people don't make it. And then yeah. the people, the people that you don't think make it, make it. And the people that you do think make it, they quit. And it's just like, I don't know. There's no equation to it. There's no, there's no secret formula. It's not like yeah. I read a book about mental fortitude or anything. It's just, I yeah. don't know, either you got it or you don't. It's just, you just have to not think about it and just, just continue. I was just, I had nothing better to do. So there's right. no place I had to be. Nothing. To, if I just, if you quit, all I know is that you got to go to the normal Navy and like scrape paint on boats and stuff. And that sounds pretty so bad. That, so. that, yeah, that was <laughs> That vision was your motivation to, to stay yeah. in the seals. Yeah, I guess, but it, it just yeah, never crossed you know, it's my interesting. mind. I just did a podcast with a guy, Gabriel, a soccer player. He played in college and all. And he, he wanted to be a pro. He didn't make it to the pros, but now he's got his master's in psychology and all. We were having conversations similar to this, right? What's that vision? What's that motivation that puts you into the action that you know you need to take? And he said that there's some science out there where some people will hold an image of a negative outcome. And that's the motivation, right? To drive them. And then other people hold the vision of the opposite of that, a more positive. Here's what I want versus yeah. what I don't want. So it sounds like you said you were 18, 19 years old and uh, you just didn't want to scrape paint off boats. Yeah. I'm like a terrible person to ask these questions to as well. Cause I feel like I don't think like most people, I'm kind of like easygoing, like go with the wind, go with the flow kind of guy. Like, yeah, I just say, I want to do something. And I just, try exhaust all options and if it doesn't work just move on to the next thing it's just i don't yeah. know like when i went to france when i was a foreign exchange student i had no rhyme or reason to do it i didn't right. care to learn french i didn't really care to go to france it's just it's just a thought that popped up in my head i was like yeah i'll do it and then my mom just told me to raise some money and then i got a job and got half the money and she paid for the other half and went and did it and then wow the seals was just kind of like yeah sure why not let's try it and then <laughs> football yeah. let's, let's do it <laughs> but that's okay <laughs> I, I mean i think that and i i would i would argue that you know i do a lot of these interviews and, and i think this is great i would argue with you to reframe where you go i'm not a good guy to ask these questions i mean you've got tremendous experience and i think that when you say to people hey just try it and if it doesn't work out move on to something else I think people, that's one of the reasons they don't try it because they get so wrapped around. What if I fail? What if it doesn't work out? And that's just a bunch of head bullshit, right? Like you don't have that. You just say, hey, I'm going to go try it. I'm going to yeah. go for it. And if it doesn't work out, we'll move on to something else. I think that's yeah. I think that's tremendous wisdom. <laughs> you know, yeah. as you say that, I'm thinking parts of my life right now where I'm like, yeah, Damien, thanks a lot. I need to, I need to hear that. <laughs> yeah oh, i know it's man. harder for people like i'm a pretty quiet guy i don't like talking to people very much so yeah i understand why a lot of people wouldn't want to go out there and just try something so yeah 
but you'll never know if you don't try, right? That's like it, that. brother. <laughs> That's it. So then, you, then you're in the seals, and you were on underwater demolition. Is that what you said? Buds. What is what is it called? Uh, Buds is basic underwater demolition school. That's the first part. Yeah. So when you were in the seals, and and you know we don't have to get too particular on things because I'm sure you can't talk about some of the engagements or whatever. But what was your role on the seal team? Uh, so once you become a new guy on the seal team, there's a couple opportunities that opportunities that you'll have depending mm-hmm. on like uh jobs that need to be filled within your platoon because the platoons usually revolving and the older guys are leaving and new guys are coming in and stuff so right uh there's there's a couple key jobs uh the main ones are like sniper breacher and then there's like comms and other intel and other different jobs but Uh i got breacher which is like deals with explosives and like opening doors and stuff and with that comes like uh they call it like first lieutenant. So I just took care of all the boats and motors, anything that had to do with like engines or whatever we were using. That's kind of like what I uh, was in charge of. Wow. So you were real good at keeping all the engines running and blowing stuff up. Yeah, that was my job. Well, I'm sure you did it well, brother. So thank you. <laughs> all right. So yeah, we won't go any deep. Maybe if you're, if you and I, uh, our, our paths cross and we, you know, we get together with Carl. Maybe you can tell me a little bit more because I'm always intrigued by that. And as I said, thank you. Thank you for what you did, man. I know it's, uh, you know, it's a lot. It's a commitment. So then how long were you in the SEALs for? How long were you in the Navy? Uh, six years. Two years of training and then four as an actual SEAL. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then you could get out whenever you wanted or or how's, how's that? No. Happen? So if you join the military, you have to do it by contracts. And there are ways to get out. Uh special ways to get out if you if you need to get out early or something like that but usually that's kind of rare but you sign contracts for uh basic military it'd be four years would be your like uh, average one but if you try to become a seal you have to do it for six because it's two years of training and then four years of seal and then uh and then after that four years you can re-enlist and then start mm-hmm. going on from there getting bonuses and stuff so right. it works works the same for all military it's just right. re-enlistment. So, so what was your decision to get out did you know you wanted to get out uh, yeah, I knew I wanted to uh, get out about two years before I was getting out just because mm. uh, I wanted to go to school and play mm. a sport. And then if I would have reenlisted, it would have added could reenlist for two years. I think it's the minimum time, but two to four years uh, mm. reenlistment. And if I did that, then I would have been getting out at 28 and that'd be a little too old for probably the sports. Yeah. But yeah. I just wanted so, to do it when I was 24. So you got out of SEALs at 24. Yeah. And then what was your, uh, you know, what was your vision? What did you want to do? Well, before I got out, uh, I knew I wanted to go play football because I couldn't uh, I didn't think I could play baseball or soccer anymore because just my size was about 245 uh, when I was in the SEALs after after I was in there for a little bit. So uh, I decided I want to play football. I never played it before, but uh, it just seemed like the sport that would fit like my body type. And uh, my mom's boss used to go to Nebraska in the 60s, used to be on the football team. So he kind of introduced me to, to that. But at the time. I was looking at the top 25 teams for football Mm -hmm. uh, when I was getting out and uh, I applied to all top 25 schools uh, and got into like half of them. And Nebraska was one of them, but they told me they had a good like walk on program. So my plan was just to go from like school to school and then try out for each team. Right. Not knowing that every you couldn't actually do that for a lot of the teams. I just got lucky. But uh, Nebraska was my first stop and I just got super lucky to uh, to make it there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, I, I, I admire your humility where you see, you keep saying you got lucky, but I got, no, I did get you, lucky. Cause uh, I, I got to think you worked your ass off a little bit to get there too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I never played football before. So that's kind of like a big red flag for a lot of people. And I, I didn't make, yeah, the team. I guess so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even make the team when I, they had in-house tryouts, like anybody that was registered to the school could go and, uh, uh-huh. They said, I like after two weeks, if you don't get a call, you didn't make the team. So I didn't get a call. So I ended up uh, doing everything I could to try to get in contact with people. So I sent an email to the entire football staff, you know, saying that I was like free and I'd pay for my own gear and all this stuff. Like, I don't even know what I said, but right. basically saying I was free. And then I waited outside the stadium for uh, like four or five days until the head coach came out. And then I finally found him. And was able to talk to him. And then I got got a angry call the next day telling me to come in and never do that shit again. But then they gave me a chance. And then, <laughs> <laughs> this is a fabulous story, man. Yeah. Oh my god, who was the coach then? Uh, Mike Riley. Oh, okay. Yeah, got it. Nice never guy. do that. Yeah, he's he's got some big six foot, two hundred forty five pound seal lurking outside the stadium waiting for him. Yeah, I think that would scare the majority of us. 
But yeah. but talk about talk about you know vision and focus, right? You knew what you wanted, and you just said, "I'm going to continue to try to figure this out and yeah, do what I need to do." Because in order to try out for teams like that, I know a lot. I don't know how many teams actually hold like open tryouts like that, but mm-hmm. you have to be registered and attending classes to even try out for those. So if if I would have failed, I would have had to unenroll and then re-enroll at another school like oh, yeah. next semester. It would have been a nightmare. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so what happens then? So you you go out for the team. You never played football before. Did you have you, you had an understanding of the game? I mean, you're an athlete. You played soccer. You kind of know. Yeah, I little. never watched. Yeah, I didn't watch football like NFL or anything. So it was like learning a new language. Uh, I was really really bad when I when I got there. They put me at inside linebacker. Uh-huh. I had I had no idea what I was doing. Uh-huh. Then we got a new defensive coordinator, Bob Diaco, and then. Uh, you know, I finally we were out there and I finally did a drill right where I like filled the right gap. And then right when I was happy, he's like, all right, go over there with the D line. And then I switched positions to D line. I was like, OK, whatever. And that what, made did he life. move you to defensive end then? Uh, no, it was a three, four defense. So there wasn't really a D end. Yeah, there's outside backers, but he didn't move you that. But uh, right. right. So I was a true like D lineman wow. three tech for four. I but uh that actually helped out a lot because it slowed everything down. Wait, it was like, go right, go left, go straight. And not too much else besides that. Yeah, so, yeah you, you had that yeah. wired, right? So yeah. how long, how long were you at Nebraska then? Uh, five years. Five years. And did you graduate? Yeah. Oh, right on. What was your degree? What's your degree? Uh, in? Child, youth and family studies. All right, cool. So you're there and you played how many years? Uh, it took me three years to get on the field. And then I played, played for basically two Played for two uh, as a as a backup, and then I decided to transfer to Buffalo after that to get more film and stuff. Since this is my sixth year, right, right. So, so by the time you go into you go into Nebraska when you're 24, never played football, right? You got on three years to get on the field, and then you got on the field. You played two, got you graduated, it's wonderful, and then you said, "All right, I want to go play some more." So, what led you to Buffalo? Uh, it was just connections through the coaches. So the strength staff at uh, the old strength staff at Nebraska. Uh, Used to work with the head coach at uh, at Buffalo, Maurice Washington, got uh, when they when they were there. So it was kind of more about connections. So before I even got in the transfer portal, I was talking to the coaches, seeing if they could find me a new place to go. Right. And so most all the coaches were happy to help me. So they're that's kind of I, I already had a place to go before I even went into that's the great. portal. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's cool. And I can see why they like you, man. You got a, you had just got a nice personality about yourself, very humble and. You know, it seems like you care about other people, so people are going to help you. I think that's really good. So you get up to Buffalo. How long did you play up there? I just played for – I got there right before fall camp. or I got there in the summer, I guess, for a little bit, and then went straight into fall camp last season. And then I was, that's all I was out there for, like six months. Just So you just played this one past season? Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah, nice bowl game. I watched that because you you, you and I have that uh, mutual friend, Carl. So, yeah, I did watch the, the bowl game. Congratulations on that. You did well. Like, so then you get out of Buffalo now, and and again, here's your your philosophy, right? Damien's philosophy is let's let's just figure out, let's try that and see if it doesn't work. So what what's next after Buffalo now? What are you thinking about trying out? Yeah, so right now uh, I'm with a, I'm back in Nebraska working with a running coach, and uh, I'm also doing like long snapping, and so I'm trying to show like once we go to back to before pro day show that i can do all the da and stuff and linebacker drills and then i'll also do the long snapping and mm-hmm. so if there's any way that they'd want me for like special teams or anything like that that'd be great so i'm just trying to show them everything that i can do so i'm just getting ready for that and that's really it so right that's now. your vision to go play in the nfl now for 10 years or something <laughs> yeah i just any team that'll take me, I'll take it, man. <laughs> oh, I love that, man. I love it. So, are any teams interested right now? Can you talk about that? Oh, I no, I don't think so. I don't know. Some people are trying to help me out, but I have no idea. It's it's all up in there. I think I have to wait until pro day. I have to get pretty good scores. Uh huh. And what's what's pro day like? What's that? Is that kind of like a open tryouts, or how do you get into that? Uh, it's the same as like the NFL Combine, like, but it's each instead of like being invited to the combine combines for like the best athletes uh, in college, they all get invited there. And mm-hmm. uh, 
the people that don't get invited, every school has runs their own pro day. So scouts come out to that and you mm-hmm. basically do the same thing, run your 40, do your agility drills, your sure. five, 10, five and stuff like that. And then you mm-hmm. do your position drills and yep, uh, weight bench press two hundred two twenty five, all that. How many times? It, yep. Yeah. It's basically exactly the same. And scouts will go from school to school. Uh, uh-huh. and that's kind of opportunity for other people to, uh, get noticed and stuff. So, yeah, uh, I just have to kind of perform well there, hopefully, and then and yeah. then go from there. So, yeah, it, well, I would, it, I, yeah, I wouldn't hope. I would trust that you're going to perform right. Hope is, <laughs> the, hope is hope is the one something to happen. Trust is to have a firm belief in the reliability of someone or something. So, I, based on where you've been, man, I would trust that that you, you're going to this will work out for you. That's what I'm yeah. feeling. Yeah, that'll be cool. Do you have a certain position that you want to play, or like you said, you're just trying to show them your versatility? where they may go, Hey, okay, this guy's not going to start for us, but he's good to have. Yeah. So I, I was thinking like more, like I'd love just to be like a special teams guy. And mm-hmm. uh, if they need that, it'd be great to be like a defensive player, but uh, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot better athletes than me. So uh, just mm-hmm. being real about that. So uh, cool. it'd be great to, to just, uh, you know, do all four special teams or be like long snapping or something. So mm-hmm. and any, you've... any job they need. Yeah, that's it. You're there for him. Uh, you started, you and I have talked about this before. We won't get into it too much, but you started to, um, you never long snapped in college, did you? No, I taught myself, but uh, I was the backup in Nebraska. I've never snapped in like a game. Right. Yeah. But but now I've seen you doing some film. So you've got somebody coaching you on long snapping and all. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, just getting me ready, getting me ready mm-hmm. for like, because pro day, we'll have to show, like, do a little showing of what i can do so it'd be like mm-hmm. 20 20 snaps of mm-hmm. of what i can do so yeah i gotta think that. long long snapping looks a heck of a lot easier than it is right yeah yeah how do you feel about it you feel like you you, you got it going on pretty good yeah for someone that hasn't snapped very much so i think uh i'm in a decent place you know i'm not the not the best but right i'm getting better so yeah that's good i'll bet you are man i'll bet you are anything else going on in your life no, that's really it. I'm just, uh, uh, you know, I'm, as you can see, I'm living in a garage and uh, just training in the morning. And Are you really in a garage nothing. in Nebraska? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Just, well, it's, it's probably nicer than some places you've spent nights. I bet if I had to imagine Damien. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at all, but I'm just, uh, all my focus is just for pro day. It's the uh-huh. only, yeah. only thing I have yeah. up the road for right now. Yeah. What do you, what do you do to kind of keep yourself? Do you do anything to kind of keep yourself focused, inspired, relaxed, you know, meditation, journaling, prayer, you got anything that you do? No, uh, I'm a super, super simple guy. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't drink, I don't go out, I don't do anything. I just, I just do my thing. And then I don't know, everybody always asks me what my motivation is. I don't really have any. I just, it's just what I want to do. So I'm just doing it for fun. Yeah. Yeah. Just having fun with it as I go along. So like I said, if it doesn't work out, just move on to the next thing. So, uh, that's cool. That's, that's kind of it. I don't have any, yeah. I don't well, do any I, yoga I, or anything. I, yeah, no, I think, I think this is, as I said, in knowing you just a little bit now, I think I, I'm, if I had to bet, I'd, I'd probably see Damian Jackson in the NFL next year. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Yeah, Not so, quite sure where or doing what, but that doesn't matter, right? Yeah, even if, if it's a water boy, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, man. I hear in you. Is, is, is your mom still alive? Yeah, yeah, she's in Vegas. Oh, that's great. So she's watching all of this. That's cool. Um, I always ask because, you know, it's important to me, and I just like to know where people come from. Any belief in something higher than us? God, spirit, something bigger? No, nah, I've never been, like, one to go to church or anything like that. You yeah. Know, I've just... Yeah, I'm just like I said, I just go with the flow, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not about it's not about church. It's just you yeah. know, sometimes people I you know, will they tap into that that hey, I'm here and you know, I'm I'm part of something bigger. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you've ever had experiences around that. And certainly in the military, sometimes like you know, you hear people that have Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's never really been my thing, but I respect all of it. Right on, right on. So you're just uh you're just going after the next thing right now. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. What do you think's important in life as we go through life, all of us? What do you think's important? What do you want to look back when you get to be 60, 80 or whatever and say, yeah, it was a good life? Uh I don't know. I just for me, like the only thing I know that I don't want to do in life is like work a nine to five job. So mm-hmm. those are that that'll never work for me. So just 
Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to do things I know I'll have fun with, like football. Yeah. Like football, I absolutely love playing. So I know mm-hmm. that if I could do something like that, then it'd be great just to, you know, just to have fun while you're working, you know, just make money and having fun every day. And then if this doesn't work, there's other opportunities. Like there's a lot of connections with NASCAR. Like why not just go be a pit crew, man? That sounds fun. It's just keep yeah. doing things that just sound fun to you, you know, whatever. Well, I think that's good, man. That's, that's great advice for people, right. In life, you know, do things that, that bring you joy, do things that are fun. Yeah. Cause there, cause there's a lot of people that don't Damien, trust me. Yeah. They're, I know. They're, they're just caught on that vicious uh, conveyor belt of life. You know, working yeah. somewhere that they don't want to work for the wrong reasons or in a relationship that they don't want to be in for the wrong reasons. So I think that your your wisdom, you know, you, you say it's simple. You're a simple guy. But most times I think powerful wisdom comes simply like that, right? Yeah. Just yeah. know yourself. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, I don't care about money. I freaking haven't had a job for seven years. And yeah. Living in garages and stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> just do what you enjoy. Well, yeah. And I got to think when you get to the NFL and make a lot of money, you'll probably do some good things with that for other people. Shoot, I'd take a contract for ten dollars a month. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I I hear you. But you you got a great spirit, man. You really do. Anything else, brother? I've enjoyed our our conversation for sure. And um, you know, I wish you all the best. And I'm sure everybody everybody listening probably has a smile on the face saying, "Man, that guy is really cool." <laughs> so let's trust that we get you a lot more fans from this. But a- anything else, man? Anything else at all? No, not unless you have anything. Like I said, I'm not the greatest with interviews so <laughs> well I, I, we we talked for about 40 minutes and i'm i'm this is this is one of the best i've had in a long time you know <laughs> the other ones are good too but no i think you have a very easy way about yourself and a good strong energy and i yeah. think um what i would take away from our conversation that i would offer all of our audience to think about is you know you see damien saying okay i'm gonna go try that and i'm gonna give it my all and if it doesn't work out it's okay and i think what's really important is too many people attached to the outcome and put a negative spin on it. So it's not, so then they don't even try. And yeah. I think what you're saying in the journey, that's, that's part of the journey. Do, do things, push yourself, um, you know, connect with good people and, and just go for it, you know, and kind of have a light heart as you go for it and be easy on yourself. Right. Yep. I have failed countless times. I can't uh, even tell you. So just keep, just keep pushing through it. That's like it, even bro. this, uh, I'm going to the specialist camp. Uh, like I said, on the 15th, Right. And uh, I will probably be the only specialist that's not actually a specialist. You know, like <laughs> I'm sure everybody's. <laughs> so, You're a so, specialist in name only, right? Yeah. So I don't care like that. Other people have been doing it their whole life. Screw it. Just let's see what happens. Yeah. Oh, so I, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm sure you don't really give a shit about what other people think. No, I don't give two shits. Yeah. Which is perfect. Again, that's something else. Every, so many people out there. You know, myself included for many times, you know, we get wrapped around what, what are other people going to do or what are they going to say when we do this or say it? Don't worry about that. You yeah. know, just be yourself as long as you're not doing anything bad, right? As long as you're you're, you're doing good things, just get yeah. after it. And if, if they have their opinions, you know, just smile, like you said, and, and move on from them. Don't engage with them because you're not going to win that battle, right? Probably a knucklehead in there. They're, they're probably a little low on their own self-esteem and they're just trying to bring you down. Yep, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, well, Damian Jackson, I appreciate this this podcast interview. You did a great job, man, a great job indeed. And uh, I know I'll look for you in the NFL next year, and I wish you all the best, man. I really do. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks you for having me on the show. All right, take care, brother. All right, see ya. See ya. Well, wasn't I right about that conversation with Damian Jackson? A few things that I took away from the conversation I really, really liked was how humble he is. He's got some tremendous accomplishments and just a very easygoing, humble guy. The things that I took away really on top of that humility was his ability to generate discipline and focus. I like the fact where he said, I see something and say, that looks interesting. I'm going to go after that. So he creates that vision. and You saw he did it through high school and then with the Navy SEALs and then into the college to play at Nebraska. His vision is where am I going? And I think that's so important for us to have that. I also liked how he knows where he's going, but he's not very much attached to the outcome of that. He's engaged more in the process. What's the discipline? What's the action that I need to take? And if I can just do that, right? Like Nike says, just do it. He said, then I'll trust that the outcome will be what I want on the other side. 
And I'll tell you, based on his experience so far in life, if I had to bet, I'll bet that I'm going to see Damian Jackson in the NFL next year. He also had a very nice way about himself where he didn't take himself too seriously. And the great lesson, again, that he reiterated at the end of our conversation is don't worry about what other people are going to say or other people are going to do about what you're up to in life. Just get laser focused on what you want to create, get into the process, build focus and discipline, and go make it happen. So until next time, live a life of fulfillment and resilience because that is what you're here for. Peace.